Right, Mark Andre Fleury could be a Las Vegas Golden Knight tomorrow night for the expansion draft. Expected to be drafted. Uh, expected to leave the Penguins today, making uh, another saying goodbye in Pittsburgh. Yesterday he was in McKee's Rocks. Tonight in Cranberry. Um, Ron, we expected Mark Andre Fleury to be gone. This is a good opportunity for everyone involved. I mean, he's going to be a starter. He's going to be the franchise player in Vegas, and the Penguins are going to be able to use that money to be able to sign some guys like a Schultz or get another forward or maybe another defenseman. Yeah, it's a, uh, to me, it's a win-win. The, the situation had become untenable here. They weren't going to go both he and Murray again next year. Uh, that's too much to pay for the goaltenders, and, and they both want to play. It worked out great in the playoffs, although they didn't feel like it worked at all in the regular season. Uh, so this is time. Uh, Flurry will go to Vegas. He'll get a chance to be a star out there and start over fresh and continue on what I believe will end up in the Hall of Fame. My question before we get to phone calls, Ron, um, do you think the Penguins have to give something else up? I mean, he's the best goalie in the draft. He is no doubt the best player, the obvious choice for Vegas to select from the Penguins. And there's a lot of rumors going around there that the Penguins might need to sweeten the pot a little bit. But why would you think they have to well, sweeten the pot? I mean, I think that deal's done if there is something. Uh, you know, because they, they want somebody to take them and take his money off of their, off of their books. And, it, you know, they, you saw their exposed list. I mean, they left a couple pretty good players out there. And uh, Rutherford was asked, how do you expose Brian Rust? And he goes, well, I'm pretty sure the way things are, he's not going anywhere. I think they know that already, Rich. I think it's a done deal. Now, whether they have to throw something else in uh, to get Vegas to do it, uh, but I think that has already been done, and he will be picked by Vegas tomorrow. All right, let's go out to the phone lines. We're going to Al in West End. How you doing, Al? Hey, Richard. How you doing? Good. Thanks for calling. Good, uh, thanks a lot. It's always good talking to you. And pretty soon, you and I will be uh, doing our annual Penn State debate pretty soon. So I look forward <laughs> to that. Okay, yeah. I'm ready. Uh, actually, <laughs> Mr. Cook always stole my thunder about my question. I don't know how they protected this work, but he already brought the point. How could you leave Brian Rust on that list? I think they're playing with fire. I know everybody thinks it's going to be Mark and Jay Flurry, but I don't know how you leave Brian Rust on that list. That's dangerous. Well, again, dangerous. again, I think it's a done deal that he's not going to be going anywhere. I agree with you. If, if this was just a blind thing here, I'd be all uh, right alarmed with you. But I think Rutherford basically came out and said well, he's not going anywhere. They know yeah. that. But, you know, I mean, a lot of other guys, Scott Wilson, before Brian Russ became who he was, Scott Wilson was projected to be the better player. That's another guy, another young, talented guy. I mean, Oscar Sundquist, Carl Haglin. Who do you – I mean, I think but they picked the right guys. It doesn't goes, matter. But, it, yeah. But, You're I mean, only going to lose one guy. Who would you take off the protected list right now to put Brian Rust on it? That's – that, that would be my question. Yeah, four or your eight, you have to keep on because they have no movement clauses, and they picked Hornquist uh, and then the three defensemen. Hornquist is the, is the heart of that locker room, I think. You've been in it all series long, all playoffs long. Very I mean, much he's so. the guy that uh, he makes well, that locker Sid room. Sid is go. the heart Sid, of that locker yes, room. Sid, yes, Sid, but Patrick Hornquist. I, I get, I get yeah, what you're yeah, saying yeah, about Yeah, you know Hornquist. what I mean. All right, let's go out to um, Brad in Duncansville. How are you doing, Brad? Good, Rich. Hi, Ron. How are you? Good, Good evening. Good, thanks. Um, I have a penguin question and a pirate question for you guys. Go, go ahead. Okay, my penguin question is, um, I know, like, my question is about Haglin. I would like them to hang on to Haglin because he, because of his speed. Okay. Uh, uh, he he makes you... a lot of money, and he didn't score a lot of goals this year, but I think the coach likes him because he likes the speed game, as you talked about. He's outstanding four-checker and a good penalty yeah. killer. I, I, you know, I don't know that he's going to go anywhere, although I do think there's going to be some trades made, Rich. I really do. I think his yeah. roster is going to be turned over a little bit. And my part question is, do you think the Pirates will go find a reliever for Tony Watson? I don't think they can get anything for Tony Watson. I mean, go find another reliever. Where are you going to find a guy like that? I mean, yeah, I mean, he's. I look for him to be traded before the deadline, too. It's unfortunate because he was so successful in the setup role and just has not got it done uh, a, a, as a closer. So I still think they'll try to move him and get what they can for him. And yeah. I think he'll help a contending team as a setup man. Yeah, I think so, too. But the, I don't think they're going to get much for him right now. All right, let's go out to um, Jerry. In Hemfield, how you doing, Jerry? Hey, Rich, great hey. to see you back. Oh, hey, thanks. Ron. Yeah, how you doing? Uh, before the season started, I called in and told you that uh, when the Pirates finalized their roster, I says uh, 
their pitching is going to be really bad this year. And everybody says, well, they got a couple good starters and the bullpen looks pretty good. And I said, no, it's not going to work. Well, it looks like my thought came true. Now, the second thing is this. Even though they're only like a couple, seven games behind, I don't think that everybody thought they might win 85 games. He was talking about maybe. I said they're, they're lucky if they win 70-some. Looks like that might come true. Now, at the end of the year... Maybe you should be doing the show, Jerry. Now, <laughs> at the end of the year now, when it looks real bad, what is the pirate management going to say next year again when they fill the team? Oh, I think we're, we're going to be contenders this year. I think we have a good chance. That's what they said last year. I think they have to come up with a new solution to fool the fans. <laughs> what do you think? Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, Jerry. Jerry knows all the answers, Rich. You can handle that. I mean, that. I thought I mean, that. He, I, he knows I thought, it all. I thought it was reasonable they could get to 80, 45 wins. I said um, 80 was my yeah, prediction. And before. I was around 80, 40. And I dropped it like 10 when Marte was. Uh, uh, that's suspended. a big blow. I mean, that, that's a big blow. And On so top of Gung. Gung and Tyon. And I, I don't know what you say to fans. I mean, it. In order to get the Pirates' attention, fans got to stop going to games. Oh, well, attendance is down. I mean, it's down significantly. I don't think they've had a sellout yet this year. Yeah, so I think that's your only way to get their attention. I don't know what the – I mean, they're not going to change their M.O. That's their financial flexibility. That's what they do. Uh, they try to build through the draft and, and grow players in the system. Um, they're not going to change that. They're not going to go out and get a big-time free agent. That's just not who they are. Nope. You're right. All right, um, one more co phone call. We'll go to Masterson before we take a break. How you doing, Masterson? What's up? Hey, Rich, what's going on? Not too much. Thanks for calling. Uh, listen, the Pirates, the only thing I'm going to say is it's time we go back to what the gentleman Jerry was saying before. You know, we're going to have to get some top flight players in the Pirates because every time we get, you know, we're looking serious sometimes, you know, but when we get down to the bottom line in October and stuff like that, I don't know, they collapse or whatever, you know. And when we have the good players, the top flight players, you know, they they draft them, they send them off and stuff like that. If they don't want to open the purse strings, then we're we're going to be talking about, here we go again next year for the next umpteen years, you know. I mean, the fans are tired of that, and you're not going to get a sellout crowd because, you know, you, people aren't going to spend any money just to come down and watch them go on the field and try out. That's point number one. Point number two, the Pittsburgh Steelers, they're going to have to get a top-flight uh, backup quarterback uh, instead of a bunch of nobodies because, I mean, Roethlisberger, he's, what, 33, 35 now, and he's not going to be there forever, and they need to get somebody in there that's going to be, you know, uh, ace number one that can come in and do the job. You know, so... All right, thanks, Masterson. I appreciate it. I mean, I, I, they drafted a quarterback. That's going to be their future backup. Uh, he's not going to be replacing Ben anytime soon. But, you know, going back to the Pirates, getting a top-flight player for the Pirates, um, if it's me, I keep McCutcheon. Pick up his $14 million option. You're not going to do any better than that. He's a guy that at least. He's a star. This is a star town. People want to come and see stars play. And if you trade him, who do you have, really, as an attraction? Well, it depends what you get back for him, though. Um, and, I, you know, if, they're, if they look like they have a chance to win the division, I'm all in favor of keeping them. But if they're not, uh, then you risk losing them at the end of the next year for nothing. Or you try to trade them next year when he doesn't have any time left on his deal, you're not going to get anything back for him. Uh, I think it depends what they do in the next six weeks, um, if they can hang in there and show that they're a competitive team. But I can't take them seriously until they get to 500. If they're in the mix at the trade deadline within a couple games, I, you're going to get Starling Marte back. Do, do you believe them. in them at I'd that point? If they're over 500, yeah. But, I mean, I think they better be. The Cubs won again tonight against San Diego. I think they're going to start to roll. And you better be ready to keep up. All right, we've still got a couple minutes. We're going to go out to – should I take a break now? All right, let's take a break. We're going to come back and take a couple more phone calls. Um, we'll be back in a couple minutes. We've got a couple lines open. If you want to give us a call, 412-575-2600 is the number.